So, you're going to see Oppenheimer, or you already saw it, and you have no idea what's going on and want to learn a bit about it, so you're not totally lost watching the Christopher Nolan movie. Well, you've come to the right place, because today we're going to go over the life of Robert Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project in just five minutes. Here we go. It's World War II. America just beat the Germans, but the Japanese are still fighting on. Their military and economy are ruined and have no no chance of winning, but they don't want to surrender. The American military thinks that they will have to invade mainland Japan to win the war finally, which would kill hundreds of thousands of American soldiers and millions of Japanese. To make matters worse, America's president, who had been in charge for the whole war, just died a few months ago and his vice president, Harry Truman, takes his place. Everyone's thinking, how are we going to win the war if Japan won't give up? But then Truman gets informed of a super secret project that he didn't even know about until he became president. This was the Manhattan Project, and the man in charge of its development is J. Robert Oppenheimer. Rewind. Oppenheimer was born in 1904 in New York City. His parents were Jewish Germans. He obviously took a liking to science as he graduated Harvard and then went to study atomic research in Oxford at the age of 21. He struggled there there, as most of his work was in the lab, when he was actually more interested in theory and visualizing the more mysterious parts of physics and the universe. After trying to kill his teacher, he ended up transferring to Göttingen in Germany, where he met famous physicist Niels Bohr, the man who theorized the structure of the atom. During his time in Europe, he would also cross paths with famous physicist Werner Heisenberg, Jesse! no, not that one, and Albert Einstein. Eventually, Oppenheimer came back to the US, where he worked at UC Berkeley. During this time, he brushed up against communists, still common at Berkeley, including a student lover as well as his future wife. While Oppenheimer held left-wing ideas, it's not thought that he was actually a communist. Back in Germany, a massive scientific breakthrough happened when scientists discovered nuclear fission. The potential for using this as a weapon was quickly realized, with the German government starting a program for this just after they invaded Poland in 1939. But since they didn't like Jews, and liked drafting lots of grad students into the military, the Germans had hurt their ability to seriously pursue this project, and they never got close to developing a nuclear bomb, even with Heisenberg leading the project. But the rest of the world didn't know that, and all they knew was that Germany had great scientists and they liked to kill people, so everyone was scared that they were going to make a nuke. Einstein himself was concerned about this and wrote to US President Roosevelt that the US should beat them to the punch. So in 1942, America started the Manhattan Project. Oppenheimer was chosen to run the program. Oppenheimer helped develop a pop-up village in the desert of Los Alamos, New Mexico. Eventually, though, Germany surrendered and the nuclear threat was gone. But the war still wasn't over and America had a brand new weapon they had been working on and a good target to test against. Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project tested the first nuke, codenamed Trinity, at Los Alamos on July 16, 1945. The project had worked and they knew it would be incredibly destructive. But the US still wanted to make use of the bomb, of which they now had two, nicknamed a little boy and the more powerful fat man. So the US decided to bomb two cities that were largely untouched, Hiroshima and Kokura. Both places had military and industrial centers, so they were legitimate war targets. On August 6, 1945, a modified B-29 bomber flew over Hiroshima. This B-29, the Enola Gay, dropped a single bomb which fell for 44 seconds. Then, about 2,000 feet off the the ground, little boy detonated. Everything was flattened for almost a mile and tens of thousands of people died. But Japan still didn't surrender, and three days later, America tried once again. Kokura didn't work out, so they shifted to their secondary target of Nagasaki. On August 15th, Japan finally surrendered to the US. Over the days and months after the bombing, as many as 226,000 died, only about 20,000 of which were military. Oppenheimer at first was proud that he had made the bomb, but he wasn't very happy about using it, especially since Germany had surrendered and they hadn't even been close to a bomb. Over time, his guilt seemed to grow, even telling President Truman that he had blood on his hands. He also had the I am become death destroyer of worlds quote. In 1947, Oppenheimer became chair of the Atomic Energy Commission, which is where he was when the Russians detonated their own nuclear bomb in 1949. At this point, America wanted to develop a more powerful version of the weapon 
called the hydrogen bomb to have better nukes than the Soviets, and he opposed this since he didn't want an arms race. But his opposition, coupled with the fact that Russia had a spy in the Manhattan Project and his left-leaning politics, put Oppenheimer on the outs. He was more or less branded as a communist and had a security clearance and position stripped in 1954, in large part due to Louis Strauss, who he had publicly embarrassed years earlier. Years later, in 1963, Oppenheimer was awarded the Enrico Fermi Award, which boosted his image once again, and he would live out the rest of his life in Princeton, New Jersey, where he died of throat cancer in 1967. The story of Oppenheimer is important because it beckons the question, just because we can scientifically accomplish something, does that mean we should? The harnessing of nuclear energy spearheaded by Oppenheimer ended World War II and created an incredible energy source, but it also started the Cold War and opened the possibility of global annihilation. So that's it for this video everyone, hope you enjoyed, let me know where you'd like to see next, and I will see you in the next one, goodbye.